Hey, how is it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an AEM wideband gauge slash sensor. And uh, basically all that gauge does is it tells you your air fuel ratio and it's going to make it a lot easier to tune the truck. So with that being said, make sure you watch till the end of the video because I start to find a way I want to set up the gauge and then I change my mind uh, and I just show you guys how all that's done. But with that being said, don't purchase this AEM wideband gauge without watching the video first. Uh, it came junk right out of the box, so we had to order another O2 sensor. I mean, if you just watch through, you'll figure it out, but I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. Anyway, we're gonna hop into the video now and start cutting up our templates. So that's step one right there. We just cut out our metal face plate after tracing it out. It's pretty easy. I just had a spare vent laid it on here and traced out my, uh, my template. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure, in case I don't like the, the pod that I'm making, or the, uh, the triple din, I think it's called, for the gauges. Uh, I have this old, broken uh, piece of plastic. And basically, I want to use this because right here I have a mount hole. I have a mount hole there. Might be able to create something for that side. But basically, this notch is in right there for the middle trim to sit flush. So basically, I'm going to get rid of the vent. And we're going to hopefully lay our metal template over the top of this just perfect after I clean it all up, la 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 la, maybe wrap it in some material. And like that right there allows me to have this little slit right here so my original trim can sit flush. And uh, instead of screwing this down to this plastic because it's so brittle, I think we're just gonna use some sort of JB weld. I mean, just trying to be as custom as we can and make it as reversible as possible because if I don't like the, the gauge setup, I can always put my factory vents back in the truck and just seeing what we can create. So now we're gonna sit inside the truck and see how our new template fits. So obviously it's gonna be a little hard to tell with these vents here. So we'll just turn these a little bit, just trying to get a rough estimate. And the cool thing is with this metal plate here is it'll still look good because this is set in here, maybe about a quarter inch. So we have our plate, I just cleaned it up a bit. Obviously you can tell it's not very square. So something we're gonna go back and trim up, but I'd rather just uh, come out here measure it and look at that. Already, I already see, I don't have to cut off that much. Just trim right here, and then I'm gonna wrap it in a fabric later. So this isn't that bad so far. I'm actually kind of excited. Just sealed this up right now, so it doesn't corrode anymore. Got UPS stopping it, which is kind of sick. Now we're going to uh, cut this up a little bit more to make it fit. So really quick, just to add, I don't think there could have been any more of a perfect timing. This is literally the wideband gauge that we were waiting on. So now, uh, now it's gonna get a little serious. I'm gonna try to get this done over the weekend. Should be, should be pretty easy. Okay, so to break this down really quick, we just got our AEM wideband gauge in. And essentially, right here is our gauge. It's digital. And this is the white faceplate if you want that. We are probably not going to use that. Right back here, these are your little brackets that you use to hold the bracket into place. So you slide it into the hole, and this will go around these two uh, prongs and hold the gauge into place on our custom plate that we are currently making. And uh, right here, this is the power harness that's gonna plug right back here into the gauge. And over here is the O2 sensor harness. And this also plugs into the back of the gauge. You can't mess that up, it's pretty easy. And uh, when we're out there, I'll show you what wires run where. And lastly, over here is your fitting. This is something you're gonna need to weld into your exhaust at above a 10 degree angle to run your O2 sensor. And what this will allow you to do is this gauge will read your air fuel ratio. And this will be good for when we go to run the Mega Squirt plug and play ECU we got for the KA24E. Now I could be wrong, but right here is just a quick wiring diagram. I don't think I'll end up using the white wire. I don't think I'll have to in this case. So all I'll have to worry about is the red 12 volt power when ignition is turned on, black for the chassis ground, you can ground that anywhere, and blue is the serial output for the ECU. Okay, so I think I have a little bit more of a direction I wanna go with this. Instead of folding my fabric completely around it, I'm actually just going to glue the fabric to the face of the metal, and then at the very top, it'll just crest over, and that'll give it a good finished look, I think. I, I mean, you know, this is just what being a car guy is, just getting custom with it and trying your best and seeing what you can make happen. Okay, so I'm working in the garage now, and right here, you can see we are going to start our cut, and uh, I just picked up this metal two-inch hole saw blade that goes right to a regular drill bit. So I'm just gonna put this down, be very careful, and just start drilling slowly. So although this doesn't look beautiful right now, we have our first gauge in. And remember, now I'm going to take the fabric and lay it over this and see how it'll look. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but 
I don't know. I think it's going to look pretty good in the truck once it's all said and done. So inside the house, I've taken some JB Weld and applied it to the top of this. So I don't know. I don't. I actually have only used JB Weld once. Probably isn't the most perfect thing to use it for, but if it works, why not? You know. So we're just going to put some heavy that has some weight on it, and then I'm going to come back, fold that lip at the top, JB Weld the back of it. Hopefully, it stays. And if so, this would be sick. I would just like to say, if anybody was doubting me, this is actually coming out pretty sick. The JB Weld is super strong. And I'm using these little clips to overlap that top piece of a uh, pleather. I think it's just pleather. It's fake leather, obviously. It's not real. Or vinyl, maybe. I don't know what material it is, but it's coming out pretty good. I just got to do the second half later, cut out the hole right there, and we will be good to go. So I'm just going to let this sit and dry, come back, do the other side, and uh, we'll cut out the hole. I'll put, install the gauge. And then we'll go outside and we'll put it on the truck. Okay, so we've just cut our hole and now I'm going to take the gauge, feed it in this way. There's little prongs on the back where I will add this bracket and that's what's gonna hold it into the hole. And bam, there we have it, guys. I'm actually really happy with the way this came out. That little folded edge right there is uh, not cut yet. That's why it looks a little funny. So that's gonna get cut and uh, it'll be pretty good. So I'm really happy. Like I said, there's that bracket just goes on the back here you tighten it down hold your gauge in place all right guys so after all that work uh of trying to fit this right around here i don't really like the look of it to be very honest so instead i think i'm going to install it right over here cut it down uh straighten this out a little bit this side was a little bit taller than i wanted it to be i was trying to go to the contour of my dash because it, it, it seeps down a little right here but that's uh that's okay we're just going to cut this up a little bit more and see if we can fit it right here in a nice way. I'm not too sure how I'll mount it yet, but I will figure that out as we go. The nice thing about these vents is they legitimately just pull out. Just be careful because this, this trim on the outside is very fragile. And uh, I'm gonna go see if I have an extra housing laying around that I can use to try to make my mount. So I do believe with this actually, what I can do is I'm just gonna trim up just enough to make it fit. And I'm just gonna make it like, just just a click in tight fit. Like the pressure of each side of the dash will just hold it in place. But I gotta cut it up. And then I think I'm actually gonna take a lighter, kind of melt the material off and run a whole new sheet of material and wrap it around all the corners. That way it'll uh, just like this seam, just so it has a good seamless look when it sits in there and none of these rough edges. So honestly, I'm liking this a lot better and it leaves my dash alone over here i think these vents are kind of just needed so i'm really liking this i'm just going to shave it down a little bit more on each side because the fabric is going to wrap over and this is a perfect fit right now i won't even need to bolt that down so i'm pretty excited about this i i like the changing uh changing idea a little bit better but if you wanted to run the double uh tr to triple gauges over there where the vents are you know how to do that now <laughs> so i'm just going to cut up the sides a little more and we'll go wrap it with fabric so far, this is the progress of the gauge panel. Real mess back here, but it's just a bunch of epoxy, which isn't a big deal. So I cut the corners to now hopefully fold them over each side. Once I do that, I'll make my final cuts. We'll make uh, a cut for the center, install the gauge, and we'll go back outside and throw it in the truck. All right, guys, while I'm in the middle of waiting for the fabric to dry, we are going to take this uh, little fitting and we're going to drill out a hole on my exhaust to apply it and weld it. So essentially, if you have a turbo, I think you want the O2 sensor to be at least, uh, they say about three feet away. But if you're just going off the block, I think it's like a foot away. It's like 12 inches after your manifold and then 36 if you're boosted. So I'm probably going to just go somewhere down here. Should be plenty far enough away and just see if I can get a drill up there to get a good angle, go right at it, like a good diagonal angle. You don't want it directly on top, you don't want it directly on the side, but you don't want it back down here because any condensation will ruin the gauge. So we're gonna do our best and see what we can do there. Driving around after we got the, uh, the bung welded to the exhaust and we found ourselves a wild Evan. <laughs> So to be very honest, to save myself some time, I'm just gonna go down to my local exhaust shop and have them weld the fitting on my exhaust for the O2 sensor. 
um i just had them do it and they did a great job it was really cheap and just saved me a ton of time i don't have a welder so just to be all that extra and do it myself doesn't really matter so when i lift up the truck i'll show you guys the sensor but right now i am going to just start wiring in the harness for the gauge so in my case for right now all we need to worry about is the red and black wire i'm going to leave the blue and white wire just hanging now and uh we'll probably come back in another video and i'll show you guys where to run the blue wire to the ecu but essentially this is really easy i just need to run this right here so i can just feed this up and through here and uh, i'm gonna cut back the harness quite a bit okay so i just uh set up the wiring harness like i said you just take the red wire and I wanted to plug it into my fuse my fuse panels. So right here for my cigarette lighter that I don't even have connected to anything. This only comes on when the key is turned. And then I ran my ground all the way down to legitimately this bolt right here. So just find a good clean ground, put a little ring terminal on it like this and ground that out. And then the positive, like I said, you can just run in a place where you have fuses that only come on when the truck is on i'm gonna find a different way to run this like i'm gonna plug it i'm gonna actually wire into this the proper way with like an extra fuse or something but for now it'll do and uh, when i turn the key there we go so that starts up so now it just needs to be able to get its reading and to get its reading we're going to install the o2 sensor harness in the o2 sensor which like i said you have to weld in that metal bung on your exhaust above a 10 degree angle and you will be good to go and uh, they do make an application where you can just bolt it on, but I don't know if I'd recommend that because I don't think you'd want any air to pull through there. So I'm surprised they sell that. It must be sealed off real good, but for long term, you're better off just welding it. So as you'll see in here, there is where we welded that, uh, that little plate in. And uh, he even put in a little close-off plate just for me to get home, which is super cool. He did a great job. It looks great for me. I mean, no one's ever going to see it anyway. And... I don't know. I just love the turn out of it. It was fast, easy, cheap. So now I'm going to pull that plug off and we're going to tighten down our O2 sensor. But uh, right here, I got a 7 8 wrench. It's the size you're going to need. You don't want to drop this on the ground or anything. You're going to be very careful. Um, this is what reads your air fuel ratio mixture. And uh, they already put some never seize on there, so you don't need to add any. So I'm going to go under there, put this on, tighten it up, snug it up. And uh, then all I have to do is run my harness through the truck probably up the frame or something in the cab all the way down to where i mounted my gauge so that right there is exactly how you want it to look and here's a little side of view so you can just kind of see the angle we put on there and now we have this little harness that plugs into the o2 sensor that makes it so your o2 sensor is replaceable and then like i said i'm going to run this wire however i need to up to my gauge and if anybody's going to ask how i'm going to run it I actually uh, have this hole in my floor where this grommet goes, so I'm just, I just kind of slice this grommet, gonna put it back on, and run this cord up and all the way over. Okay, so now we have ran the wire over here. I just gotta take care of the rest of the harness in just a minute, but we're gonna plug that in now, and our gauge will be all. So we're gonna plug that in now, and our gauge will be all plugged in. Sweet. So just real quick, I'm gonna tuck up that harness and we're gonna give it a quick start check, make sure it's reading properly. And uh, if so, it's fine. If so, we'll set it in our plate, we'll mount the gauge and we'll be done the install. Well, now that we have everything back together, we're gonna to take our gauge and uh, I'm just waiting for the last piece of fabric to dry. We'll cut the hole and fit this, but I wanna start this up and make sure it works. You know what I mean? I wanna make sure uh, everything is functioning as it should before we get too carried away. Cool, that came on, start it up. And now it'll give us a reading. So honestly, I don't know a ton about this, but I don't know why, I don't know why it just dropped so much. But I don't know a ton about this, but I uh, I think 14.7 is like where, where just about you want it. Um, I could be wrong. And as we give it power, we drop. So this is kind of a cool thing too, because this might mean that uh, my truck might need a, a tune pretty bad. Because like I said, I think this must be about 14.7. And uh, if we're idling all the way down here, the only things I've done is the EGR delete and exhaust 
that kind of half-ass cold air intake thing. It's not really a cold air by any means. But, uh, yeah, so it's just a cool look. So I'm excited to get that computer in here. and uh, Just cool to see what it's, what it's set at. Just for example, this is cruising. Just speeding up a little bit. Put it in third gear, we'll just kind of coast. So we're running, like, high 13s, 14s. I, I am in the throttle a little bit. But not like, not much. Like I said, just a cruising speed. I'll get over here and I'll rip on it a little bit. And that, that gauge is obviously going to drop the minute you start ripping on it. So if anybody has any insight about these numbers, I mean, I'd love to, I'd love to hear about it because I am currently learning myself and then uh just the idea of that i'm going to be tuning my truck myself hopefully uh through mega squirt so we'll see how it goes so i don't know what happened i'm just taking a video in case anybody else has this issue but my gauge just all of a sudden just started going blank and i'm hoping that it's not too close to the exit of my manifold getting too hot but i don't know that doesn't really seem to be the case to me i mean I did set it back quite a ways, so I'll let you guys know. All right, here we have our gauge now, all set up in the box. And uh, one thing I already noticed is I'm getting these three lines, like the thing is completely just like leaned out. And uh, I guess I guess a lot of people just right from factory have issues with the O2 sensor. So I'm gonna drop a link in the description if I end up having to go with getting another O2 sensor, which is just crazy because the sensor is like, this gauge is like, I think $170. So to be getting a bad O2 sensor right with it is not a great look for o, uh, AEM. And I've seen a lot of people having the same issue. So something to just note, uh, I probably would recommend going with a different wideband sensor, but uh, we're gonna plug this in and give it a go again. And just real quick too, I'm actually really proud of this installation. That is heat. That looks really good actually. Like I'm, I'm completely okay with this. So pretty hype. We have our own little custom setup for the gauge now, right where the vent used to be. I think I like that a lot more than I would have liked it there. And it even leaves me a little extra spot to uh, add a second gauge in the future, which will probably be this one down here and a boost gauge here. So, oh, just something cool. Had to share that. Irregardless, this just shows you guys uh, how to set up a wide band. Unfortunately, this isn't my fault of the fact that this gauge is already bad, but it just shows that the gauge is already bad. That's not my fault, or it's actually the sensor is bad, not the gauge. The gauge, I think, is fine. So, like I said, I would look into some other options, but this gives you the base premise on how to set up a, a wide band especially the AEM one. So in another video, I'll let you know how that sensor works and we will run the remote wire to the ECU once I install the ECU. And, uh, I have plenty of space between, you know, the block all the way down to the uh, O2 sensor. So it's not, it's not getting too hot. I took it up and down the street once, but have you guys got to see it work for a second. And uh, I'm gonna go cruise around for a little bit. So in another video, I'll show you guys uh that working properly again with the proper sensor it's going to need i'm going to link in amazon uh, i'm going to link an amazon link in the description for the the sensor i'm going to try and uh i'll let you guys know how it, how it goes and uh thank you so much for checking out today's video for real i'll uh, see you all in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe see you later